people and welcome back to another day of crafting. We have another really fun project going on. I decided to reuse the tops that we made for our flower pens to create some amazing flowers on paper. And a little pot just for someone special that says Happy Mother's Day underneath it. So this is the craft we're working on today. Again, great for kiddos, big and small. Um, if you didn't get a chance to make this craft, you can always draw or paint your own flowers in the pot after you're done creating the pot. Super fun, super simple, and a beautiful thing to hang up and surprise someone for Mother's Day. Let's get started. The things you're gonna need are a piece of paper, whatever color doesn't matter. I use purple. If you don't have purple, you can always use a white piece of paper to get it started. And then you need a smaller piece of paper to become your pot on the bottom. Now. If you don't have colored paper, you can always color a piece and then place it on here. I'm gonna make sure that we have a pencil gathered together, scissors, of course, and then your favorite kinds of colors, whatever those might be. You can use paint, you can use colored pencils, markers, crayons, whatever you've got at home. Let's get started. So here's our fun project today, my friends. I'm not gonna show you what to do with paint. I'm actually gonna walk you through what it might look like to draw a few flowers and then create this beautiful little hidden card down on the bottom. I made this one for Granny. Who are you making yours for? Have you thought about it? Yes. Who are you making it for? It's a secret. Oh, okay, it's a secret. Again, Mama's Day Craft. So the two things you're gonna need right now is a big old piece of paper for your background and a small piece or a different colored piece of paper for your pot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take one of my colors that I have over here and I'm going to uh, leave a nice rectangle shape at the top. You can draw that line all the way across if you want to kind of give that dimension and maybe color it in just a tad bit. Again, any color that you want. And if you don't have colored paper, you can color this pot in later. And then I'm gonna come just about two fingers worth in on the top of the pot and angle it down. Two fingers and angle it down. Okay, to show where my <laughs> to show where my part starts and stops and then I'm going to take my handy dandy scissors and just cut along those lines that I created pulling it up and over pulling it up and over now if you do not like the lines that you created guess what you can just flip it to the back and use it as a shape on the back but I personally well unless I color this in a little bit I think I'm going to flip it over here and it's gonna live like this. The best way to get us started is not actually to glue this down, but is to give ourselves a little indicator as to where it starts. So I'm gonna put this line right here, real soft line, to just show us where the flowers need to end up. Okay, my friends? And now we're gonna do some draw in. I'm gonna grab my pencil. My pencil's kind of crazy looking, you like it? I made it myself. I'm gonna pull the flower off for right now though so you guys aren't constantly staring at it. And while my partner in crime over here is working on hers, I'm gonna walk you through what drawing some different flowers might look like. We've well, got all the space up here to fill, so I really wanna encourage you. You might wanna do three, you might wanna do five. It's really up to you. Maybe one for every kid that's in your house for your mom. I know that since I made this one for Granny, I might make this one for Maybe my other grandma, Grandma Sally, if you're watching this, you might get this in the mail, okay? So what I'm gonna do first is show you how to make three different kinds of flowers, one for each of the ladies in that grandma holds special. We'll go grab one, you got time. So the first flower I wanna show you how to make is gonna be a daisy, super fun and super simple. I'm gonna put the daisy up high and I'm gonna make a circle for the center. Right? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna evenly space some lines all the way around. It could be as many or as little as you want. I'm just trying to keep them mostly evenly spaced. If you notice, you've got some that have too much space than others you can add another line. Kind of looks like a sun right now, right? The more lines you add, the more petals you're gonna have. So we could do this fun where we pull it up and connect it and leave a line in the middle or we can create our separate single petals that come up and come back down. And then this one, same thing, comes up and comes back down. And look, I just tucked it behind it. Here we go. Comes up and then comes back down. Out, if it goes off the paper, that's a-okay by me. What do you guys think? Up and back down. 
and we're pulling that pedal out and we're traveling the same direction and connecting it back behind the other pedals. It kind of looks like one of those pinwheels. Up and back down. This one's a little close, so I'm gonna pull it out a little further. Up and back down. And now this one can just get tucked behind to fill in that space. Now, if you notice, I got this one guy, he's really skinny. I'm gonna come back in here and make him a little thicker. He's the one that's sticking all the way out and on top. So I could pull this down and then add one more right here, bringing it up and pulling it back down. Boom! Fun in the sun, daisy happening right there. All right, the next flower I think I'm gonna include is gonna be back here, but I'm actually gonna put it behind this one. So these petals, I'm not gonna erase them. I'm gonna keep them the way that they are. I'm gonna show you how to draw a tulip. Tulips are special for spring right now. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you which direction my tulip is pointing. So I've kind of created this really wide open C and I'm actually gonna pull this up and curve it out and then pull this one petal back down, just like that. This area is gonna become the petal that's in front of this one. So I'm gonna curve up from the center and out and around, bring it back out. Oh yeah, there's that petal right there. Now we've got this fun open space here that we can kind of play with with different petals if you wanted to. Filling it in and around, maybe a big petal in the far back. No, I don't like that big petal. It can go away. There we go. And then tulips have these really fun stems. Right, and this stem is really thick and curvy, so I'm gonna curve it this direction, behind this one, and then pull it back down into our line down here. Nice, thick stem. Our daisy friend, I think, can get pulled down like an imaginary line from here all the way to here, and it's just gonna go straight into the pot. And last but not least, we've got some big space right here. I'm thinking about, mm, I'm thinking about a rose maybe. Yeah, I think a rose would look beautiful right here. So the first thing I'm gonna do for my beautiful, beautiful rose is I'm gonna start us out with a center petal to get us started. Just that's the center. And it's gonna fold over and then I'm gonna just kind of move out from here, making some really wide, some really long. Some of them are a little shorter and it just, whoops, too much, too much lead. And it just continues to bellow out just like we did with our daisies, except these overlap each other. These keep ending up behind one another as we travel out. And again, you can make some smaller, uh-oh, we're gonna overlap here. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna erase some of that stem and put a petal in its way and then bring it back down. And I think my rose stem is gonna curve right here and come down into here. If you wanted to add any leaves, now's your time to do it, right? So I think I might add some tulip leaves right here. Tulip leaves are really big and pointy and they kind of curve around and inside they curve around the, the stem itself, which I think is really fun. There we go. And then our uh, daisy friends might have a leaf. Ooh, fun leaf maybe coming out this direction over all of this. Again, if all this overlapping is too confusing for you, then don't bother with it. You can add whatever you want, wherever you want it. But I wanted to give you an opportunity to really see and learn about overlapping. So here comes our daisy petal, or our daisy leaf, I should say. Wah, 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 wah. Wah, wah, wah. There we go. Sticking out from our stem. I like it. And then for roses, if you wanted to add some little thorns to your rose, now is a good time to do so. Last but not least, fastest coloring ever in the whole wide world. We're gonna color these in and zap it back and let you see what they look like. We are finished coloring and now we gotta get back to adding on our pot. All we're gonna do is line up our pot to where we created that line before. I'm gonna put it a little higher just so it covers the line I created. And we're gonna take a little bit of glue. And what we are going to do is glue the top down. So what I'm gonna show you is actually the line that I'm gonna glue. Look at, do you remember that line we made? Well, there it is. I folded it so that I remember this flap needs to come up, okay? So what I'm gonna do is just add a little bit of glue to the back of my pot. 
And then I'm gonna line it back to where I needed it to be, lay it down, push it down for a couple of seconds, and then flatten out my pot. Ta-da! Now, you can write anything you want or decorate on top of this, but we need to make sure that this flappy opens up, right? Because there's a secret message hidden. So on this one, since that one's for Granny, I said I was gonna make this one for Grandma Sally. So I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm gonna write Grandma Sally on it. I can decorate on here if I want to. I know how much grandma likes flowers. So I think I'll decorate with some flowers. Five point daisies are super fun. Circle in the middle and one, two, three, four, five bumps. One, two, three, four, five bumps. And then maybe put some, you know, some fun green vines in between. Just a little doodle, just a little something to decorate. And then the fun part happens under here, which is where we write our special message. Now you could write something here, but I think it's more special on this crisp piece of paper to write a little message down here. Uh, and whatever message you would like to write is always fun. I'm gonna put, hmm, what's a fun flower pun that I can put, girls? You don't know either. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. I know like eight bone puns, but that's because of the song that I was thinking. Thanks for helping us bloom. Cheesy goodness right there. Yeah. I'm trace it over again in another color because this isn't standing out for very much. Thanks for helping us bloom. And then I think I'm gonna put each of our names in one of these flowers just to make it super clear and obvious. So let's see, um, Sunflower is definitely gonna be Nanners. Hooray. Put a big old E in the middle of it right there. And the purple tulip is definitely going to be Quinn. But I don't know what color to put it in. There we go. You can still see it, but it blends in kind of nice. E, Q, and guess who the rose is for? You. Wah! That's, that's a daisy, I thought. Sure. Not, not Looks like both. both. Sounds good to me. And now, you can take a picture of this and send it to your grandma if you're not able to see her. You can set it in, a, in the mail with a postcard, stamp, whatever you need for it. It's been a long day, you guys. Thank you for participating with us. I hope you get to make something crafty and fun for the special ladies or teachers in your lives. Thank you from the bottom of our art. We'll see you later.